So prior to assessing a patient for neuraxial anesthesia, there are a few things you want to check for. Um, first and most important thing being the presence of any kind of hemophilia or bleeding disorder, and also specifically their platelet count. Uh, some providers will accept a, a platelet count as low as 70 or 80, but typically you want to see it at least 100,000. Um, also, you want to assess for any uh, history of any kind of surgical um, procedure in the lumbar area, because that's more likely to be the case in the needle presence of scoliosis or any other normal comorbidities that you would assess for. Okay. So let's take a look at the anatomy here for a second. Okay. Thanks to our lovely back model, we have a nice, slim patient with a great body habitus. So it should be very easy to identify anatomical landmarks. So the first thing we're going to check for is the presence of a cervical spine and also make sure that it aligns very well with the pelvic crease. And this will let us know that there's no presence of scoliosis and that she has a direct shot going up and down her back. The next thing we want to assess for is what we call a superior iliac crest. This could be identified by assessing the superior iliac crest here on the side here. So you want to check the hips and you'll pull a drop off. From that drop off, you want to extend your thumbs and that identifies the L3, L4 interspace. This will be the primary site for any spinal anesthesia as well as epidural anesthesia as well. And whenever you're assessing the space, you want to say things to the patient like, Ma'am, can you please push your back out against my finger? Can you arch your back like a mad cat? Can you relax your shoulders, drop your chin to your chest, and kind of put your face in your belly button? If you notice, when attention to a baby's commands, it makes the spine protrude, and now you can actually see the spinous processes on their spine. That gives us a nice view of our anatomical space that we want to place our baby. 